Engineer Seekers, I'm Nick. AMD just announced three new GPUs. Now we decided to hold off on our review based content until the next day because we felt that you might get inundated with a lot of information all at once. But it turns out though, not many people are talking about the 6750 XT at all. So let's find out what the story is. Personally, with these new GPUs, I feel like it's pretty late in this GPU generation, but at the same time, at this point in time, we've got no idea whether or not AMD is actually going to release any next generation GPUs anytime soon. Now, this might come as good news for some of you, but at the same time, maybe you're thinking of holding out a little while longer. Ultimately, all I can do is share the data that we recorded with our testing. It's really up to you. Speaking of, there is a lot of data to unpack in this video and there's chapters in all of our videos. So if you want to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as mousing over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description of this video right here. And also make sure you watch the entire video to get the context of what we are trying to say in videos like this. Now, these are also the out of the box figures only. We're not getting into any overclocking at all because a lot of these cards have factory overclocks which may or may not be to your liking. Anyway, let's get the benchmarks and comparisons out of the way first. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. We use our regular test bench for all this testing to give you guys accurate results based on the testing for that hardware. Now we've always tested with both Windows and with Linux and that's because I use both types of operating systems. Now for these tests you're seeing the same 12 GPUs in every single test and we're going to be retesting every single GPU that we've got later in the year with a new suite of benchmarks when new hardware comes out but for now we're sticking with our current platform and the main reason for this is we actually just don't know what the next generation of Ryzen will look like yet, especially with performance. And also, I just need to add this as well, especially with these Radeon benchmarking videos. We've never had a single RX 6800 come through the studio, so it's impossible for us to share those results with you. But let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and you can use that magic pause button at any time during this video to take a look at these graphs for a little bit longer. Let's dive in. The first thing you're probably noticing, even with this 1080p benchmark, is that all of the results are pretty close here. Now, this is because we're CPU limited at 1080p with this older 10900K, also PCIe Gen 3 as well. In Linux at 1080p, we're seeing it perform faster than we do in Windows, and this is usually the deal with this benchmark every single time. We always see high performance at 1080p in Linux. At 1440p in Windows, we're seeing the performance on par with the 3070 and the 6700 XT coming in just behind the 3070 Ti, which is actually good because this card's kind of geared towards 1440p gaming. At 1440p in Linux, the 6750 XT is a single frame behind the 3070. Now, I like these type of comparisons between Windows and Linux because it shows you just what those differences can be. In Windows at 4K, we see a solid frame rate of 72 frames per second, and this is about what we were expecting, to be honest. However, at 4K in Linux, we're seeing the 2080 Ti coming back to beat the 6750 XT. It's impressive that the 2080 Ti still performs so well. It was a beast in its day, and it still is kind of a beast. Let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For these superposition tests, we performed three tests in total. We used the 4K optimized preset, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Let's take a look. First up with the 1080p extreme benchmark in Windows, this one is highly GPU bound. I like to call this one the GPU melter, and we're seeing pretty average performance here. And this is typically the story with AMD GPUs with this benchmark. In Linux at 1080p Extreme, the OpenGL version has been gaining a lot more performance with newer kernels and drivers, and it's good to see some improvements here, although it's still falling behind those Windows results. In Windows at 1440p, this test is less GPU bound, believe it or not, and the 6750 XT sits below the middle of the field here, with quite a large performance gap between it and the 3070. At 1440p in Linux though, the story is completely different with the 6750 XT trading blows with the 3070 Ti. 
At 4K in Windows, the gap between the 6750 XT and the 3070 is pretty significant here. In Linux at 4K, the gap between the 6750 XT and the 3070 is smaller, but it is still significant enough for the 3070 to come out on top. Next up, we've got Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux, considering a lot of benchmarks don't use Vulkan at all. At 1080p in Windows, we're seeing the 6750 XT being only slightly faster than the 6700 XT. This benchmark is traditionally worse for AMD GPUs, but we're seeing decent performance here. In Linux though, as always, the Nvidia cards easily outperform the AMD cards. We're seeing that trend continue here with the 6750 XT. However, at 1440p in Windows, the 6750 XT claws some of that performance back and pushes itself into the middle of the field. In Linux though, the 3060 Ti is performing better than the 6750 XT. Basemark is really good at exposing weaknesses of GPUs with Vulkan. This is why we use it. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the 6750 XT return to the middle of the field with it coming in 10 FPS slower than the 3070. And finally, at 4K in Linux, we're seeing the 6750 XT besting the 3070 by a single frame, which is within a margin of error. We ran our one hour stress test in Ida64 and we couldn't get the 6750 XT Gaming X Trio above 63 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Now be aware that we run all of these tests on an open air test bench. The results in a closed system will be different from what we observed and what we recorded here. We include this result because our open air test environment is consistent with every test that we've ever done across the board. I also recorded the memory temperatures as we always have, but I thought, you know what, it's about time that I share them here with you guys to give you an idea of how hot the memory gets. Out of the entire field, the 6750 XT doesn't do too badly. I actually forgot how bad the reference 6800 XT gets with temperatures. As far as power consumption, we observed it hitting a board power draw, maxing out at 230 watts at full load over a period of one hour. And that's actually what I expected from this card. The reference spec is 250 watt, but I did not see it hitting 250 watts in any of our testing. As far as noise, we also observed the 6750 XT Gaming X Trio be almost silent over our stress testing period. You have to remember on an open air test system, you're going to hear absolutely everything in a closed system. I don't think you're gonna hear this card at all. There was also no coil wine. There was basically no sound from this card at all. Now, acoustic observations like this are just more practical than recording a number that just doesn't mean anything to a regular person. Acoustics are only tangible if the card is sitting right in front of you on your desk or on your desk in your PC. You know how that goes. Okay. So what's the deal with the 6750 XT anyways? Now, if you're not up to date with what's happening, AMD announced the 6950 XT, the 6750 XT, and the 6650 XT. Now, the 6950 XT and the 6750 XT are adding to the GPU stack from AMD, meaning that they're designed to slot into the lineup without sunsetting any of the other cards in that part of the product stack. Whereas the 6650 is designed as a replacement for the 6600 XT. Hope all that makes sense. Now, what makes this interesting is from what I can see so far, which isn't saying too much actually, is that in Australia at least, the pricing for the 6750 XT cards are close to, if not the same, as their 6700 XT counterparts. Which begs the question, if you were looking to buy a 6700 XT, why wouldn't you just go with the 6750 XT for the same price? Well, that's exactly what you'd do. Now we've seen a trend in the last month or so of GPU prices somewhat returning to normal, which is good for everyone. And if I'm being completely honest, from what I can see here with the 6750 XT, it's a far more compelling card than the 6650 XT in terms of performance uplift between refreshes, not the actual pricing itself because they're positioned at two different places. On average, we're seeing about a 10% increase on average above the 6700 XT, which is nothing to scoff at. It's got faster memory. And again, if I'm being honest, 
It's really a choice between the 3070, the 3070 Ti and the 6750 XT at the right price. Although we didn't show it, the ray tracing performance of the Radeon cards, even with FSR, is lower than any of the Nvidia cards, but if you're not looking at ray tracing performance, I would say that the 6750 XT is one of the better cards for 1440p gaming, although it needs to be the right price. And again, it's pretty hard to say right now because as far as pricing for the MSI card, there is no pricing available right now here in Australia or in the US. And I would say that it's gonna be more expensive than that reference price that AMD was talking about of 549 US dollars. And I estimate in Australia that it's gonna be between, I'm gonna say it, between 899 and 999 AUD. And in the US, it's probably gonna be around 549 and 649. I'm seeing estimations from other people saying around 630 USD, but right now it's really hard to say for sure what the pricing is actually gonna be and what the availability is gonna be like, given that we've seen so many problems with this over the past, but I don't think this is gonna be as much of an issue this time around. But what do you guys think about the MSI Radeon RX 6750 XT Gaming X Trio? I know it might be a bit of a surprise for many that AMD dropped a new GPU so late into this generation. Maybe it's a sign of things to come. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell and all that jazz for notifications. If you like the music, click the join button. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. Hit that dislike button twice. Although it kind of doesn't do anything anymore, but you know, do whatever you like. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and yeah, interesting to see a stack of new GPU so late considering that I'm gonna guess that by the end of the year we'll see even more new AMD GPUs, but maybe they're just filling a gap. Maybe they're bored, maybe they have nothing to do and they're like, hey, let's just make some new GPUs. Who knows? Nobody knows except AMD. Thanks for watching.